name is Heather Murray Elkins, and it is now 2019. And I welcome to you to a time of holy human stuff. Today we're going to go on a pilgrimage, or at least I'm going to invite you to consider a pilgrimage. The story of this pilgrimage, the one that I want to invite you to, started in the fall of 1964. Uh, we're being driven home. We, meaning myself and my three sisters. Our mother has finished teaching. We have finished class downtown Tucson. We're driving out to where we lived on the edge of the desert in Tucson, Arizona. And as we came up the crest of the hill, we saw a woman walking. She was on the right side of the road. She had beautiful silver hair. We could see it from the distance. She was not hitchhiking. She was just walking in the direction of traffic. Well, my sisters and I looked at each other and sighed because we knew supper was waiting for us at home, and we knew what would happen next. My mother would stop. We always stopped. If they were traveling on the road, we stopped. And not only did we offer them a ride, we usually, I mean, she usually, invited them home for dinner. And so that meant we would be very hungry by the time we reached the table. We pulled over, and as we pulled over, we could see that she wore a beautiful smile and a vest. And the back of the vest read, 25,000 miles walking for peace. Well, then we looked at each other because we knew that this was just not a woman hitchhiking. This was a pilgrim. And in fact, this was probably a radical. What woman with silver hair would be walking as the sunset, carrying no luggage, not asking for a ride, and wearing this vest that read 25,000 miles walking for peace. So she came home. And it was at the table we discovered that she had a name, but it wasn't like any name we had ever heard. She called herself, her name was, the Peace Pilgrim. And it was only years later that I learned what her real name was. Her real name was Mildred Lisette Norman. And it was many years after that that I learned she was actually born in New Jersey on a poultry farm. But none of that was part of the talk at the table. Whatever that name was, that was no longer hers. She went by Peace Pilgrim. We were fascinated. What was she doing, walking? Well, she was walking for peace. And where did she think she was going? The destination was less a place than possibly a condition, a destiny. And I'm going to read just a quote that was surely embedded in that conversation as she explained herself and what she was doing on the road. In order for the world to become peaceful, people must become more peaceful. Among mature people, war would not be a problem. It would be impossible. In their immaturity, people want, at the same time, peace and the things that make war. However, people can mature just as children go, grow up. And I pause here, and we were young. We were very young. And here was this very powerful, incredible voice coming from a woman who walked for the sake of children. Yes, our institutions and our leaders reflect our immaturity, but as we mature, we will elect better leaders and set up better institutions. It always comes back to the things so many of us wish to avoid working to improve ourselves. How was it this woman, who was so extraordinary alone, seemed so <laughs> peaceful and 
powerful at the same time. She showed us, because we were young, we were so curious, she took out of the pockets of her vest the things that she carried, the only things that she carried, a comb. She carried a comb. She carried a pencil. She had a small pamphlet, but only one. So she read to it, to us, from it. She couldn't give it to us. She only had one. And she had a toothbrush. And, and that was all. She carried no money. She carried no weapons. And she was walking, she said, for peace. And what she said, because I think her message was really directed to the four children at the table, she said it was very simple, very hard, but very simple. First you found peace in yourself, and then you were able to find peace in your family. And then when your family was at peace, your neighborhood could learn to be at peace. And if your neighborhood was at peace, then the whole city could be at peace. You see this simple, very difficult task? Because she did press back on the point, why it was so hard? We had to work at being peacemakers. I don't remember that she said the word God. As I've read about her later, uh, she didn't use the word God very often. But she surely believed in this incredible force in the universe, this force that was the universe. And this is what she said in the writings that she did. Her pilgrimage began when she had a vision, a vision. And this is what she wrote. All of a sudden, I felt very uplifted, more uplifted than I had ever been. I remember I knew timelessness and spacelessness and lightness. Every flower, every bush, every tree seemed to wear a halo. There was a light emanation around everything, and flecks of gold fell like slanted rain through the oneness of the rest of creation. And most wonderful of all, a oneness with that which permeates all and binds all together and gives life to all. A oneness with that which many would call God. I have never really felt separate since. It was as if she woke up to what was real. Peace Pilgrim woke up. And Jesus says, the kingdom of heaven is within you. And I have been in the presence of one who was in the kingdom of heaven because she woke up to it. It was not something she was waiting for. It was not heaven. Not heaven, heaven, as we often, I think, mistakenly describe it. She woke up and realized the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, this innate wakefulness. So she was aware of this incredible force, and she started walking. January 1st, 1953, she began that pilgrimage, and she never, she never stopped. The only thing she carried. And then those who learned about her and began to trust what she was teaching said that she discovered she could trust strangers to feed her, to shelter her, though many, many nights she slept out under the stars. And so they put together a book of some of her teachings. This came much later, and I love the fact that someone has written on the top what was in fact true about her life. The word free. It's free. Steps Toward Inner Peace. Harmonious Principles for Human Living. She walked more than 25,000 miles. Seven, seven 
complete trips across the United States. And that's not even counting Canada and Mexico. Walking, this is the way of peace. Overcome evil with good, falsehood with truth, and hatred with love. That was quite a pilgrimage. And because there are many who follow, many who are walking, many who have woken up to the kingdom of God, um, she does not travel alone. We don't travel alone. But we need to get ready to travel. And so I want to um, read something for you. It's a, it's a poem about safe passage in this dangerous world. And I want to uh, show you uh, another object. It's not as simple exactly as a comb and a pencil and a t toothbrush, but it has its merits. Um, this is a seven-in-one survival kit. Uh, there's a compass, which you absolutely need if you're going to travel. There's a temperature gauge. Um, there's a light, in case you need to read whatever's going on around you in the darkness. There is, if you unscrew it, a, a magnifying glass. Oh, a secret compartment if you need to carry pills or uh, messages, secret messages. The magnifying glass. And then, if you really, really need it, if you absolutely, in your travels, need to call for help, <whistles> there's a whistle. So, I invite you to a pilgrimage and pack um, only what you need or are willing to give away. And so I read in this new year when we all have to be ready to move. This uh, safe passage poem. Your caravan call has come. Tis the season and the reason. Immigrants, aliens all, our journey now is home. The night is star-crossed, and a new moon is rising. Let us be pilgrims of peace in a landscape of loss. Pack just what you need and are willing to share. Intend to survive. Find your own way. Leave every weapon but truth at the border. Hide in plain sight. Hope will keep you alive. Refuse Caesar's gold and all Judas' silver. Count every penny, one out of many, many in one. Liberty's Lincoln becomes a commonwealth with charity for all and malice toward none. Travel light. Trust the luminous night that blesses us with stars. Wisdom of the wilderness, promise of all promised land, we are not alone. We are not our own. We are yours. We are. Travel well.